In this fresh test video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up the ticket fields in your fresh test. So what is ticket fields? So when you hover over to your tickets in fresh test, you will see like each ticket will have its own details. Like for example, right now I'm actually clicking on one of the tickets. As you can see, on the right hand side of this panel, it would include the text. So the text is a ticket tag and there is a type as well. There is a status and there are different types of status and how you're able to customize it. I'm, a, I'm going to show you guys in this uh, fresh test video tutorial, including the groups, the priority as well. So to set all this up, you can input your own view. You can even um, input your additional fields over here very easily in fresh test. And that is how I'm going to show you guys here. So if you have not um, subscribed to this free 14 day fresh test uh, uh, free trial, you can subscribe at my link over here. Uh, when you subscribe under my link and I'm able to access you whenever you have any questions, you can Facebook DM me. So feel free to subscribe at my link referral link over here. So now let us get back to this fresh test tutorial on ticket details. So now I want you guys to hover over to this fresh test menu bar at the S at this admin, click on it. Okay, it will brought you to this uh, field here. So just search over the setting, let's search ticket. And you see over in the workflows, there is this ticket field in the fresh test. So just double click it. So there are a few things that I think uh, you are mandatory to uh, set. So the first one is um, the groups. Okay, so the groups by default, this is unchecked. But my recommendation after using fresh test for over five years, my suggestion is to make sure this is always tick on because whenever a ticket that is being submitted via whether is by your agent or whether when they are closing, it is better to actually assign each ticket, make sure that it is being assigned to a group. Okay, why this is very important is because when a ticket when is being created at your fresh test portal, if it is not being assigned to the particular group, you may not know uh, whether this ticket, is it finance team, they can have a look or operation team, can they have a look at a finance team tickets, right? So that is the reason why I will ensure that it is always checked. It is just uh, for my best recommendation. So you may not know it now, but in the future, you may feel like it is helpful. So the second thing you need to set up is the status. So uh, my suggestion, you may see that there are a lot of status uh, while well, you actually have it because what you can do is that I actually deleted some of the status that I'm not using. So you can just delete it. Um, I delete, I try to keep the status about five to six uh, at top is because if you are having too many status, all your team in your fresh test, they may be like confused, like which status they, check, they can pick. So most of the time you will keep open because open ticket means that no one have executed on a ticket yet. And you will keep actually pending, which means it can be pending client or pending supplier. I'll keep a resolve, I'll click close. And you can even add something else that um, makes sense to you. Like you can add pending or I don't know, third party. Okay. And then once you have add that, you can just save it. Okay. And there are two naming. One is a label for agents, which is internal use. Internally, when you guys are checking out the uh, status in like the ticket status, what is the naming that makes sense to your internal team in fresh test. Whereas the label for customer is when if you allow your customer to view the tickets on your portal, right? Uh, go to your website to view the tickets on a portal. What are the namings that make sense to your client? You may not want to see like, when it's pending on supplier, you may not want your cli uh, clients to see like it's pending on supplier. That's when you want to have a uh, different naming It's called pending process. So the third one is relevant to you is called SLA reminder. So SLA reminder, I'll actually teach you guys in a later on in a fresh test tutorial when you just follow through this fresh test playlist that I've assigned for you guys. So basically in a nutshell, SLA timer is a service level agreement, which means if you have a certain SLA that you have promised your clients that you're going to reply within five hours. So if let's say you want to run the SLA on the particular status, you can just turn it on. Otherwise, you can just turn it off. But as of now, it is not the most important thing. What you need to work on right now is to go and define the six different status that you may want to have uh, for your tickets and just uh, set it up here. So now I already set up. So just click on save fields. So um, as I show you guys, uh, the groups, uh, it's 
when you want to set up, it's very simple. If you want to set up different status of the group, you may ask me, hey, do you know why is it not appearing here? It is very easy because in order to set up the different types of groups that you may have, you need to go over back to admins, the setting gears in the fresh test, and you just search for groups. Okay. This is where you are going to set up different groups that you have in your freshest ticket. Okay. So let us just go back to the ticket details and continue the setup. So now I'm just going back to the admin and I'm just going back to the ticket. All right. So at this ticket fields, uh, we are going to set up which the, the one that is important. Let me see. Uh, let me see. We have set up the status. Okay, priority, that is really nothing much to set up. So I think you guys can leave it at the beginning. Okay, I'm just going to teach you guys like this is a reference number. You may not have a re reference number that you need it, right? You can delete it if you don't need it. But you can also uh, do additional fields that you may have relevant to you. Like for example, I actually have a case ID for each cases. Um, that is going to assign to my agent, right? You can actually drag and drop. So now I'm just going to drag this single line text. And because this case ID, depending on whether it's going to appear in every ticket or not, but for in my case, it's not going to appear in every ticket. It is only appear in a certain type of ticket belong to a certain type of group. So that's why I only add the case ID, uh, label for agents and label customer, but then I remain this unchecked because it may not not every ticket may have a case ID. So after that, I'm just going to click save. Okay. And you can also move this uh, around. Okay. Depending on where you want it to be shown. And each of that, you can also uh, check it by default as well. But most importantly, I would suggest you to uh, make sure group is there. Make sure you group, you check it out and status to check it out. And if that is additional field like dates, numbers, decimal, drop down, you can also move there as well. Another thing that it's called type. So some of you guys may ask me like, June, what is the difference between type and group? Okay, this is how I'm going to see it. Group is like a main category. Okay, it's like, for example, the group can be like finance team. Okay, the group is related to finance. Anything related to finance, it will be under the group. But inside a group, they could have another subcategory that is called tight. So for example, the group can be finance and a type can be, you know, payment. It can be type, it can be refund. Another type, it can be installments plans by clients. Another type, it can be, you know, a payment receipt. Okay. So that's why the type it can be, you can have as many types as possible, depending on what, whatever that you need. And you can also ensure if you want the agents to actually select the types when they created it. But to me, it is not the most important thing, but it is, if it is important to you, you can check it out. To me, the main thing that is important to me is the group, but type is not so much, all right? So uh, you can delete it or you can add the choices that is relevant to you. Uh, remember, the type to me is like a subcategory and after that, you can save the field. So once you have done type, you have done like a status, you have done like grouped, but you, the group, you have to make get settings in uh, the gear here. Uh, you can add in any case ID. Pretty much, you're putting set up. So let me just teach you guys how to navigate this. Now, we are going to get go back to the fresh test ticket field. Okay, let's check out um, each ticket, right? In each ticket, as you guys can see, there are a few different fields. So the first response deal is more like a the first time uh, it's already due right now is because I know no agent is replying to this ticket. So that's why it is in red color. So by right, when someone reply to this ticket, this will become back to the green color. So red color is like a warning. So the resolution deal is means that by this certain time and a certain date, this ticket must be in the resolve mode. All right. So when it becomes red, it means that this ticket hasn't been resolved is again another warning. So text to me is again another sub sub category. And this is how I'm viewing it. Group is the main category, followed by group that is a type which is sub category. And if you want to have another layer of sub sub category, that's where you can use tag. I don't use it very often. But if let's say you want to use it, you can just uh, use the tag whenever, whenever you checking a ticket like for example maybe this ticket is related to finance it's my subcategory is about refund and then uh, this you have another tax is like uh, for example 
client refund, you can actually create it. But I don't use it very often. Um, it's just for you to just treat it like a hashtag in Instagram or Twitter. It's just for you to easily navigate through the tickets through different filtering. Okay. So type as usual, like as I mentioned, type um, my main category is based on my groups. So for example, this billing and the type it's related to, you know, refunds and the uh, this is my main category, subcategory, and sub subcategory. All right. So the agents I haven't assigned to someone. So let me just assign it. Case ID, as I mentioned, you can have it. Someone fill it. Fill in it is not mandatory because I didn't set that. So if someone can fill in, for example, you can click update. Okay. So this ticket remain open. Remember, I actually added another status called pending on supplier. Um, as soon as someone actually resolve it, you can click on resolve. So I want to show you guys. Uh, now I'm just going to add in resolve and click updates. And I'll show you guys in each ticket in fresh test, you can check out the status and activities that is being done on this ticket inside the fresh test. It's very transparent and you can see that I actually, a few seconds ago, I updated on this ticket in fresh test. These are the things that I actually updated. I even added a tag and I even resolve it. So another thing that I want to teach you guys related to the ticket fields is that when you go over to dashboard, you can see like an overview. There are 15 open tickets right now. There is one ticket that is due right now. There is two overdue tickets. So as a supervisor and as every agent in your fresh test portal, they must always ensure that there is no ticket that is being overdue. So these um, dashboard in fresh test actually serve you as an overview to double check. Like for example, there is a ticket overdue. So what you should add on it, right? So just assuming that this ticket is being resolved. So let us check back. Why is it that it's a prompt? It's because I actually initially when I set the ticket field in the group, I make sure that I tell Fresh Test, hey, you know what? It is mandatory for my agents to fill that up. So that is the reason why right now they're prompting me. Okay. So and let me update it again. So just now we had two tickets that is overdue, right? But since I resolved one, uh, that is all that is no more ticket due that is due today. So that is 14 ticket is done on the side. So this is how the fresh ticket work. So if you have been enjoying this video tutorial about how to uh, navigate the ticket fields and how to set up ticket fields in fresh test, I hope that you enjoy this fresh test tutorial. If you are loving it, feel, uh, feel free to give me some comments down below to motivate me to do even more fresh test tutorial to help you guys. And if you have not signed up for the free 14 day trial for fresh test, feel free to sign up here. I'm actually putting up a link down below. And when you sign up under my uh, referral link, I can actually assist you. Whenever you have any questions, I can assist you because I have used the fresh test for the past five years. And I'm very experienced in using that so that you don't have to waste your time navigate around. And also I input my Facebook DM over here. So that in case you have any question, you can send me a DM at facebook.com slash June Low Story. And also I am a helping uh, coaches and entrepreneurs to create seven videos in a week. If let's say you want to rock like me, able to create videos at any time and anywhere, having a YouTube channel to get, use your video marketing strategy to get more leads for your business. Feel free to check it out, our signature program, which is uh, Amazing Challenge. It's a seven day amazing video challenge where I'm going to create seven videos together with you guys. And end result is that you're going to produce seven videos in a week. And I have proven track records helping set almost more than 300 students and entrepreneurs all over the world. You do not want to miss that out. Check out at www.amazingchallenge.us. And also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I hope to see you guys in the next Fresh Test video tutorial then. Take care.